Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get a massive drum sound out of your drum set on the Behringer Wing. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, what I'm talking about with getting a massive sound is by using a parallel set of drum subgroups. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take all of my drums, put them into two subgroups, process one of them slightly differently, and blend that with the first subgroup to get this massive sound out of the drum set. So right now, here is the sound of my drums. It's pretty good. Here's with the band. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're gonna take these drums and just make a massive sound out of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute the band here. And I'm going to take these drums and put them into a mix bus that's set up as a subgroup first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select my mix bus one, which you can get to by going to your bus masters, and we have bus one. Now, if you have transitioned from the Behringer X32 to the Behringer Wing, one thing that's really neat about the Behringer Wing is that this single bus is stereo. So there's no more need to link bus one and bus two together. This is a mono or a stereo bus, which means that by default, the way that it's set up, it's a stereo bus. So we can send all of our drums to this single bus and still retain all of our panning, which is great. So I have selected my mix bus one, and I'm going to go and press the next tab down, so my bus mode page. And once I'm here, I'm going to select subgroup. And that has now changed mix bus one to be a subgroup. I'm then going to go to bus two and do the same thing. So now I have bus one and bus two, both as subgroups. Now, if you're setting this up on your board and you happen to have some monitors on your first set of channels, you can always page over and do it later in your mix bus number. So don't feel like it has to be on mix bus one and two. It can be on whatever mix buses that you feel comfortable using. So now that I have those set up, I'm going to go ahead and title these. So let's go ahead and give it an icon first. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a, light and we can give it a icon and this is going to be drums okay and then my mix bus 2 is also going to have a little icon and a light and this one is going to be drums parallel and so i put two little dashes here to represent parallel because those are you know parallel lines so what I'm going to do is I'm then going to take these two mix buses and send them to my main left right bus. So to do that, we can select our mix bus one and we're gonna page all the way down to this tab where we have our main sends. And all I'm going to do is turn it on. And then I'm going to go to my mix bus two and do the same thing, turn it on. Once we have assigned our mix buses to our main left right on here, I want to start sending these channels to my mix buses. So I'm going to go ahead and press select on my drum group, and then I'm gonna hit sends on fader. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna jump my left fader bank to being that I can now assign these channels into the mix bus that I have selected, which is my drums. So I am going to assign all of my drum channels into this mix bus, including my overheads and everything. But then there's my parallel drum bus. This is not going to get any symbols. It's not gonna get ride symbol, it's not gonna get overheads, it's not gonna get hi-hat, it's not gonna get splashes. No symbols should go to this mix bus, only the round drums. So that would be kick in and kick out. We have snare, snare bottom, I have a snare sample, I have tom one, tom two, and a floor tom. All of these drums are going to be going to both drums and drums parallel, and the overheads are going to only be going to drums. Once we have done that, we will jump out of sends on fader mode back into our normal mode. 
because these drum channels are going into these two buses, and then these buses are then going into the main left right main bus, I need to remove all of these channels from the main left right bus. So to do that, I'm going to select my kick channel, and I'm going to again go down to my mains sends tab, and I'm going to remove it from the main left right, or the main one. All of the channels that I have going into these subgroups, I'm going to do this too. Now we can see that all of these channels are not going to any of my mains, but they are going to my subgroups, which is exactly what I want to have happening. The next thing that I can do is I can turn up my drum group. And I can go ahead and select this and go to my main tab, and I can dial this in exactly to 0 dB and get that at nominal gain here. There we go. And now if I press play on my tracks, we will now hear these drums going into this and then into our main left right. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. And we can see that I have volume control here. Okay. And the next thing that I want to do So currently, all of these channels are going into my drum bus, and that's the same mix that we had before. We haven't really changed anything about these drums yet. But the secret sauce here is going to our parallel drum bus, and we are going to apply a massive amount of compression, and then do some EQ to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my compressor, and then I'm going to pull up the No Stressor, which this is an emulation of the Distressor, which is just this amazing compressor. But what this is going to allow us to do is this is going to give us our huge drum sound. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the ratio all the way up until we get to Nuke. And then I am going to go ahead and mute my drum bus one, and we're gonna turn up my second drum bus, and we're going to dial in a massive amount of compression on this guy. So let's go ahead and go to my marker here and press play. Now my attack and release on the no stressor is set where if it's a smaller number, it's faster, and if it's a lower number, it's slower. So I'm gonna have my attack set about one, and my release about one and a half to two. And then if we turn this off and on, we'll notice that the volume is similar On the overall, I'll have to drop this output down just a little bit. Okay. After we have this no stressor dialed in, I'm going to go down to my EQ section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to add a 3 dB boost below 150. Okay, and then what I'm going to do then is go to my high band and I'm going to do a 3 dB boost above 10K. These can be rough numbers for today. And then I'm going to go find my 400 Hertz and I am going to go in pretty wide and I'm going to reduce about 3 dB as well. So we are first sending all of my parallel drums into this no stressor, and then it is going into this EQ, which is adding gain because of the way that these EQ adjustments are happening. So um, I might have to dial back my output of my no stressor a little bit so that this isn't as bad uh, adding gain wise. But I am going to unmute my drum bus, and I'm going to lower my parallel drum bus, and I'll, I'm going to press play, and I'm going to slowly raise my parallel drum bus up, and we'll notice that this drum sound is just going to get very fat and very big. So let's go ahead and do that.
can go back and listen to this again. So here it is with it. And I'll overemphasize this. Okay, and here it is without. I am actually going to dial in the EQ just a little bit more. Okay. So here it is without, and we'll go back to add in the band here. And now I'm going to go ahead and add it. without. And with. Without. and with. Without. With. Now, obviously, I am adding more than I need to just to really emphasize what the sound of this is. Typically, I will have this parallel drum bus anywhere between negative 10 and negative 5, depending on how much I'm wanting to add in, with a happy medium of about 7 dB. So here is what I would actually mix this to if I was going to be mixing this. Here it is without. And with. So I hope this video was helpful for you. This is one of my favorite things that I love doing. And if you haven't checked out my video on mixing with subgroups on the Behringer Wing, you should go check it out because I go even farther into subgroups of actually applying subgroups to my entire mix, my guitars, my bass, my keys, and my vocals. And I even do a parallel bus for my vocals to make them sit even farther forward than normally. But this is, again, one of my favorite things to do with drums. It just makes this massive sound that's really in your face. And in some musical genres, this is perfect for adding in. On other musical genres, this would not be a great idea to add in. But that's okay. I'm going to let you decide if your musical genre is right for using this or not, because this is just another tool in your tool belt for creating the mix that you want with your Behringer wing. If you do happen to have any questions, make sure to post those in the comment section down below. Also, if there's a video that you're hoping that I would make on the Behringer wing or really any of the other mixers that are out there, please put that in the comment section down below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are going to be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com. But otherwise, I hope you have a great day.